Hi everyone and welcome back! If you're new here, my name is Matilda and I make videos about books, reading, writing and other things that tickle my fancy. Today, however, I am still making updates on the foot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, brief run through, I injured my foot on the 29th of September and tore a ligament. Didn't find out about that until the very end of November and didn't get surgery until the end of March. I'm filming this update on May 9th and tomorrow, May 10th, I will have been out of the boot for a week. Now, I had the boot for three weeks and then I went to see a physiotherapist who took the boot off and uh, gave me some exercises to do. I'm still supposed to use my crutches, especially outside, because I am not stable enough in my foot yet to not use them. But I've been able to move around a little bit in the apartment without the crutches and that feels amazing. Now, it actually like it hurts in the foot and the foot is swollen and uncomfortable and I don't have full range of motion. But the fact that I can actually move around without crutches for the first time since October 1st, basically. Well, I could move around without them for a little bit, but I've been entirely dependent on them since March 21st. So it's extremely nice to be able to move around without them. And like simple things that you don't even think about. Like I can actually get my own glass of water and I can step into the shower on my own without needing help, etc. It's really, really nice. I do hurt, it does hurt, and it's very swollen. I will see if I can put a picture in, in a comparison between my left foot, which is fine, and my right foot, where I had surgery. It's not pretty. It's really not pretty. But I am very happy that things are happening. I'm very happy that I am getting better. I've had a few setbacks this past week as well, because two days ago I was fine. Fine being an overstatement, but I was decently fine. It didn't hurt terribly, but then yesterday it hurt a lot more and today is a bit better again, so it is fluctuating. But I am making progress, my exercises are going fine, and it's very nice to start being able to do things on your own. I have now taken two standing showers since March 21st. That feels good, but it's insane that the things that I'm excited about are like getting my own glass of water and taking showers. But that's what happens when you've been through what I've been through, I guess. It's been a very long process and it's not over yet and I'm upset, but it is what it is and I'm moving forwards. I have another physio appointment now in about two weeks, about three weeks since I was there last and I'm gonna call my doctor in a couple of weeks as well, just to let him know how I'm doing and see if I need to come in at all. I do have some issues in the fact that I don't have any feeling in certain parts of my foot, like the back of my big toe sort of that bit between the nail and the knuckle, or knuckle, the base of the toe. I don't really have feeling, or I have feeling, but it feels like it's sleeping and it doesn't wake up. Like, you know how a, how a leg or foot can fall asleep? It feels like that without the sort of prickly pain bit, but it's been that way since the cast came off and nothing's happening. It's not that abnormal though, it could very well be that the nerves were severed and maybe they will grow back and maybe not, but I just feel like it's so far from the actual incision. Speaking of the actual incision though, it's healed really nicely, it looks really good. I had six stitches and between the, I think, third and fourth stitch, so in the middle, right, right in the middle of the wound, I don't have any feeling. So when the cast came off, my foot was very dry and I've spent some time trying to, you know, lotion it to try to get it to be not as dry. And I asked Marcus at some point if he could do it for me because I was lazy and I wanted a bit of a foot massage, so sue me. And he was like rubbing over the, like just rubbing lotion in over the incision. And I I'd noticed myself when I'd done it that it felt weird, but when I do it to myself, obviously I still feel things in my fingers, even though I don't feel them in my foot. I know this is a hand. Imagine it's a foot. But Marcus was rubbing lotion over the wound and I was like, that feels weird. Could you just for fun, like sort of rub from the base of it to the top, um, just over it and I'll see what the sensation is like. Because at the very top, there is still a little bit of pain sometimes, but at the bottom of it, the very base of the incision, it doesn't sound like shooting pain, but if I touch there, there is definitely like a spark. I don't know how to explain it really. It's a tingly feeling into my foot and that can happen a few different places in the foot as well. I asked Marcus to just run his finger over the incision and after a while it felt like he stopped. And I was like, why aren't you? Cause I wasn't looking cause I didn't want to like visually see what he was doing and therefore feel it. And I was like, why did you stop? He was like, I have not stopped. And I was like, yes, you have. And then I look over and in the very middle of the incision, I can't feel a thing. So it's about like 
an inch, two and a half centimeters roughly, like along the incision and then about three centimeters in the other direction. If it was about a square, that would be how it went. And it's really weird. And like, I was like, okay, but maybe it's just not as sensitive. Maybe I can't feel like light touches. And then he took his thumb on my request and, and like pressed on it and could not feel a thing. And I was like, well, you're not pressing. He's like, yes, I am pressing. And then he moved his thumb like to my leg or something and pressed equally hard. And that hurt quickly and a lot, but I can't feel it in the foot or I can't feel it in certain parts of the incision. So that's interesting. But yeah, I have another physio appointment in about two weeks and I'm gonna call the doctor in another couple weeks. Not much else to be said right now. I will have a second half of this video when I've been to the physio again and see how how I'm doing then. She does think that I will get full range of motion and full function back but it is gonna take a while and I think it's the taking a while that's bothering me the most because it's already taken seven months at this point. Something like that. It's been a long time and I'm frustrated that it's not happening faster but obviously I will listen to the medical professionals and do what they say because I don't want this to last longer than it has to and I think if I overdo it, it very well might or it will get messed up somehow and I won't regain full mobility and function and all that. So I'm doing what they tell me to do but I just want to get moving. I want to get started. I want to do stuff but one day at a time. That's what I'm doing. All right so it's now time for part two of this video. Now the last clip was from I believe May 9th and today as I'm filming this is July 23rd. So it's been a bit of a longer gap than I would like for it to be. My initial plan was to update after I'd been back to physio about two weeks after I filmed the last clip. That didn't happen because I completely forgot that I was gonna update that. So here we are today, two months later and a bit, and I'm gonna talk to you about it. So what's happened since the last clip? Well, I went back to physio a couple times and at midsummers or around midsummers, which was about a month ago, from me filming this, I was declared done with going to physiotherapy and that was very exciting and it was it was nice to get to that point because I had felt myself gotten stronger in the foot, I had gotten most of my flexibility back and she deemed me ready to, you know, carry on into the world and that was very exciting. I still had some issues with certain feelings in my foot, sometimes they got really sad, <sighs> No, but sometimes it, I, I, certain parts of my foot still don't have full sensitivity, I guess is the right word. Like I can't sense certain things. Not too bad though. And I just carried on with my life. Around that time, I was also supposed to get a phone call from my doctor and I called to schedule that. And he didn't have a time in the time frame he'd originally given me. So I had to wait for a bit longer for that, but I still booked one and it was fine. He was gonna call me. And first, when I booked that, I was told that he was gonna call me in the morning of whatever date it was. And then I asked for clarification as to what the morning meant, which apparently meant between eight and 12. I said, cool, cool. And I have to go have another doctor's appointment for something else the same day, but I booked that specifically in the afternoon, just in case. The day before the doctor was supposed to call, I got a text message from the clinic saying that you will get a call from this number tomorrow at some point during the day. And that's when I started thinking, what if he calls when I'm seeing the other doctor about the other thing? And then basically reached the conclusion that, well, if he does, he does. And then he'll just have to call back because I can't be, you know, present on my phone for the entire working day. The night before I was supposed to call, I set my alarm for 8 a.m. And I had my phone outside in the bedroom I had in the living room because I didn't want to have it next to my bed because of reasons. I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and start using my phone. So I had it in a different room. Set my alarm for 8 a.m got up, didn't snooze, got up straight away. And when I made it into the living room, which is, I mean, it's not far from the bedroom, it was 8.01 and he just hung up. So he called the first thing he did in the morning at precisely 8 a.m. and I missed the call. And I was like, oh, well, he's gonna try a second time, I assume, but right then a voicemail came through because sometimes there's a delay in my phone uh, so the voicemail doesn't come through for another minute or so. There was a voicemail where he said basically that, yeah, I tried calling, you didn't answer. If everything is fine with the foot, you don't have to call again. However, if there's something you'd like to talk about, you have to call and schedule a new appointment. And that felt a bit unfair. <laughs> I felt like he should maybe have tried a second time because again, you can't really be expected to have your phone in your face during the entire day. And I was not amused. And then for some reason, it took me a couple of days to call back and try to schedule a new appointment. And of course, when I called, that was the day that they had closed 
for their summer vacation because apparently that clinic closes for five weeks, four or five weeks in the summer. So yeah, that was the first day of them closing. And they were like, please call back on August 12th. And August 12th has not been yet. But the only thing I really have to talk to him about is the fact that I still don't have full sensitivity in my foot, both over the scar as well as in my big toe. And sometimes like over the toes and the very, very base of them feels a bit weird sometimes. It's difficult to explain. I also have the sensation in my ring toe in certain movements especially if i try to stretch my if i try to like do a ballet thing with my foot not that i try to do ballet but if i like curve it that way and not this much because i'm not that flexible um i get this burning stinging sensation and pain out into my ring toe which is strange i do think all of this is just severed nerves that happens and they'll either grow back or they won't there's nothing that can be done about it but it, it's not too bad. I do think it's gotten less so over time. Either it's gotten less so or I've gotten used to it. But yeah, everything was pretty fine and dandy apart from the fact that I now had to wait until August for him to call me back. But it's manageable, it's fine. And then Q three weeks ago, Marcus and I took a mini vacation to a different city. And I think we got there on the Saturday and then we went home on the Wednesday. And we just did some walking around, went to their zoo. Um, Nothing, nothing special really. And camp kicked off right around then. So we started camp as well. Everything was fine. Everything was great. I, I got tired in my feet, but like from walking, it didn't hurt where it hurt before. Everything was great. And then we left the hotel on Wednesday morning to go to the train station, which was a five minute walk away, something like that. And there were these things. I think they're called flagstone. That's the translation I'm getting when I search for it. Uh, basically these big flat rocks that you walk on. And again, it was like a five minute walk, not very far. But of course, one of those little jerks was like half a centimeter taller or a centimeter taller than the one next to it. And where do I put my foot? My right foot, which is the one I had surgery on. Yeah, you're right, right on the very edge. So I walk and then I put my foot on the edge of it and and that was three weeks ago. Now I did get pain initially, not as bad as I did back in September when the actual big first injury happened. And also this time the foot just kind of went like that. It didn't actually, you know, roll over on its back. So it's a much less severe injury. However, the pain didn't go away. So I had it for like a week and I think I wrapped it and I tried to rest as much as possible and stuff, but I was still in pain and I was kind of upset about it because if you've been here for a while, you know how long of a journey this has been. If you haven't been here for a while, I'll have part one and part two or whatever parts I've made up in the cards down in the description somewhere. So I called my local uh, clinic to have them look at it. And the nurse said, "Oh well, we're kind of short on times right now. And this is my local GP, like it's not a specialist clinic. We're kind of short on times right now. Could you call the place where you had surgery? A, it's a different county. I'm not really allowed to go. Second of all, it's a new injury. Third of all, they're closed for summer. I cannot go. So I got an appointment with my GP the week after, at which point it had been about two weeks since I got injured. And the two days before I went in, I was like, I'm feeling okay. Like, it's not bad. You know, it's, it's, it's decent. It's doable. With that being said, I'd also rested a lot those two days. So clearly resting is helping. But then I went to the clinic and I got there and he looked at my foot and he did again a few flexibility things with it. Nothing major. Some of them hurt a little bit, but not too bad. And then he presses his thumbs on the top of my foot. So if this is my foot, I can't really get my foot this high. So just deal with the hand. If this is my foot, he took both his thumbs, which I'm gonna represent with these two fingers, and he pressed there, like as my foot becomes an ankle. That hurt. And I had a hard time trying to keep that screaming. Uh, it hurt a lot. It was pretty, pretty bad. So he prescribed me some anti-inflammatory medication, a gel and a pill. And he told me to get an x-ray the day after because they were closed at that point and take it from there. And since then, the pain hasn't really gone away. It's gone away if I've rested for a full day, but it always comes back. And I got the x-ray. It was a just normal x-ray and nothing is broken. And apparently the 
material from the surgery I had looks fine. So that's all good. But I don't think it's bone damage. If something's wrong, I do think it's, again, a ligament or a muscle or something like that, and that won't show up on that kind of x-ray. So it's now been a week since I went and saw him, and he said that, wait a week or two, take these pills and the gel, and call me in a week or two if it's not better, at which point I'll refer you to an orthopedic place or for an MRI. It's been a week. The pills aren't helping. The gel isn't helping and I'm only allowed to take the gel for a week as well, and today is the last day of that. So yeah, I have called him, I have called the clinic, and I'm gonna ask him to call me back sometime this week. And in just a couple of days, it's time for Stockholm Pride, uh, which Mark's and I are going to, and we were hoping to participate in the parade. I don't think I should walk the parade, because two days ago I went for a 20 minute walk, and I was in a lot of pain afterwards. The Pride parade route is a little bit longer, than 20 minutes. And after that we're also going to Medieval Week, which will be a lot of cobblestone and gravel and routes to cross over, so my foot is not gonna have the best of times, is it? And the annoying thing is also that the last time I saw the physiotherapist and she said that I was basically cleared from seeing her again, I asked, okay, can I start exercising now? Can I start going to the gym? Can I start swimming? Can I start running? Etc. And she told me that, yeah, totally fine. I just had to listen to my foot and I had to be aware that I might get a pain from a scale to 1 to 10, it might be a 4 or 5 during the exercise, but that it should then just calm down and stop hurting afterwards. And I was like, great, that means I can actually start doing things again. And she told me already before that start walking on uneven ground, because that's very good, because that forces your foot to learn how to rebalance itself again. And... Yeah, that's sort of what I did, even though I thought that that ground was smooth. But those flagstones were just out to get me, weren't they? This clip was supposed to be like happy and upbeat and telling you that I'm now healed and I'm good to go and that I can start things up again. And here we are. And I'm so sick of talking about my foot. I'm so sick of this being an issue. But I also feel like I do want to keep documenting it, if nothing else, for myself to look back on in 10 years and laugh at how annoyed I was by this but it's just so frustrating it's so annoying and like i'm trying to deal with it by humor at this point but it's just not funny i'm just it's laughing at it or it's crying about it and right now i'm going with laughing i am also aware that there is nothing i can really do about this yes i can try to rest if that seems to help i can do stretches if that seems to help and i'm obviously following my doctor's advice i'm taking the pills i'm taking the gel i've kept the foot wrapped up and i'm gonna ask him when he calls back if i should start using my crutches again because, you know, maybe that's the thing I need to do. But I've also come to the realization that there's nothing I can do. I can't change the past, and I can't really do anything about what happens to my foot in the future. There's no point in me being worried about it. I'm trying my best to understand that and, and be one with that, but it's, it's frustrating. And I'm struggling a bit with dealing with this, despite the fact that it's been so long. But it's something I brought up with my therapist now, so we're talking about it. This is not my physiotherapist, this is my brain therapist. Anyway, this was gonna be the last update about my foot. At least for now, I was thinking I'd do one like a year after surgery just to see how I was doing, but clearly this is not the last of it. It's not the end of it. Again, I'm waiting to hear back from my doctor about whether or not I'm gonna go see an orthopedic specialist and or get an MRI, and I'm waiting to hear back from the surgeon as well. So there will be upcoming news for me and eventually also for you. Anyway, this is the end of this clip and this video. I will update you in the future when there is more to tell you. But for now, take care of yourselves and don't do stupid things with your feet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later with another video. Bye.